Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here, and today I'm coming at you with a video that I've been wanting to make for a few days now, and I just had to get some things pieced together and do some research on it, but it's about the Washington Wizards, uh, particularly about their team between about 2004 to 2008. Now this may seem like a peculiar time to you, uh, but to me it's quite interesting because if you look at that era, they always had three all-star caliber players on their team, and they, for a few years, had Gilbert Arenas, uh, Karan Butler, and Antoine Jameson, all in their primes, and they really never did much with them, despite having three great players. And I was trying to think to you guys to kind of make a comparison of who those guys would be in the NBA today. Uh, Gilbert Arenas was basically the Damian Lillard of 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, so in around 2005 or 2004 to 2005, he averaged about 26 points a game and like seven assists. And then the two years after that, uh, 05 to 06 and 06 to 07, he averaged 29 a game in back-to-back -back seasons. So I'd say that's about what you'd get out of Damian Lillard uh, in this day and age. You know, Dame usually pulls in around 27 to 28 a game. So I thought he was the closest comparison. Also their styles too, because Gilbert, uh, he didn't have the huge physicality like a Russell Westbrook did today. He could just do a lot of everything pretty well, a lot like Damian can. So that's the best comparison I'm going to make. Also, for the sake of this video, I'm going to uh, make comparisons for the other guys as well. Karan Butler uh, was very good uh, in the prime years of his career, which was when he was on these Wizards. Uh, he was good for about 25-5, and five, and I think the closest comp I could make to him in today's NBA would be someone, uh, basically Gordon Hayward, I'd say like that caliber of a player. Like think of Gordon Hayward as far as how good uh, Karan Butler was. He made two all-star teams, I believe, in 2007 and 2008. Um, just a really good, solid guy. Not a number one option on a championship team, but uh, he, on this team, he was a, basically the third option, and he was a great third option. Uh, and then the third guy that they had, who was an all-star in his prime, was Antoine Jameson, who... Uh, it, this guy was the hardest one to come up with a comp to in today's NBA because he's like a 6'9 power forward, but he played a lot like a small forward a lot of times. He could play from the outside. He had a three-point shot. He could handle the ball a little bit. Uh, and so the first thoughts that came to my mind were guys sort of in the vein of like um, the three guys I thought of first off were Paul Millsap today, Kyle Kuzma, and Michael Beasley. I, I thought about it a lot. These guys are all sort of like 6'9", uh, maybe 6'10". Uh, maybe can do a few things like he could. I'd say the closest one, though, was Paul Millsap. Just as far as like uh, their offensive games, I'd say think of Antoine Jameson as Paul Millsap with, with a much better offensive game and a worse defensive game. But their styles were somewhat similar, just like really smart players, high basketball IQ, did a lot of little things that would pay off. But uh, Jameson was definitely more of a high volume scorer, around 19 to 20 points a game usually, and he would put up also nine rebounds a game typically. And so I, I just thought his style was a lot like Millsaps in that they shot a few threes, not a ton, uh, do a lot of mid range, can score from like anywhere inside the arc really. Uh, so I'm going to say Paul, like a better version of Paul Millsap offensively. And so to me, it was crazy looking back at this team and seeing, like, let's just, for comparison, if you had Damian Lillard, Gordon Hayward, and Paul Millsap today, you'd probably be, like, one of the three best teams in your conference, but uh, definitely in the East they would be. But this Wizards team, never, with those three guys, never was higher than a fifth seed in their conference and never really had much success, never had more than 45 wins in a season, uh, a few of these seasons, they were like just a 500 team. And so I'm going to dive into that, dive into why they weren't as successful as I really think that they could have been with a big three before the big three era had even begun, and really what held them back and hampered them overall. So to start off, I'm going to talk about the Wizards 2003 to 2004 season before this whole era really started off. In this season, they didn't have much. They had Gilbert Arenas, a guy named Larry Hughes, who if you didn't know, I'm going to make the comp of him to about Victor Oladipo, 
uh, in this day and age. He was a guy that was really good at steals, uh, pretty good at defense, made some all-defensive teams, uh, could score as well. In his prime, he was putting up between 18 to 22 points a game. Uh, so yeah, that was their other main guy when they before they brought in this huge big three. So they had Gilbert Arenas in 2003, 2004, Larry Hughes, and then really not much else. They had Kwame Brown putting up 11 points a game, and they had Jerry Stackhouse who was putting up 14 a game, but only played 26 games this season. They also had Brendan Haywood who was okay, but still coming into his own. He was only 24 at this time, not in his prime, and an old Christian Leitner who wasn't really doing much at all. So at this point, as you can see, with Kwame Brown as your third option on any team, you're going to struggle mightily. And they were a 25-win team this season, so not all that good. But then after this is when they started getting really good. And the next season, 2004 or 2005, is actually the best season they had with this core. They went up to 45 wins and 37 losses. They were the fifth seed in the East. Um, and then the main addition to this team was Antoine Jameson who was an all-star in his prime. They acquired him at 28 years old. Um, they traded Jerry Stackhouse and Christian Leitner to the Mavericks for him. And those guys really hadn't been doing anything for them. Uh, Leitner was just not that good, honestly, at this point. And Stackhouse was uh, injured a lot, and he had been falling off athletically, and overall his game had been diminishing. So it was great that they were able to get Jameson on uh, for basically not much at all. And now this year, 0405, uh, Gilbert Arenas took a huge jump as well. He went from averaging around 19 to uh, 25 and a half, 26 points a game. So he really improved. And then Larry Hughes had the best season of his career. He averaged 22 points a game, uh, six rebounds, five assists, and just shy of three steals a game to lead the league. He was on the all defensive team this year. And so they really had a dominant core. Uh, Brennan Haywood came into his own a little bit more. He started averaging uh, 9 and 7. And that was really the core of the team. They also had Jared Jeffries off the bench, who was averaging around 7 points a game and 5 rebounds. But not, you know, not a ton of production off the bench. Really not much at all. Uh, Kwame Brown coming off the bench didn't do much. Uh, let's see here. And then in the playoffs, they beat... The Bulls in the first round and then got to the second round and lost to the Heat, who had Dwayne Wade and Shaq and all them. So that's kind of understandable that they lost to them. Um, they really didn't have much production off the bench in the playoffs. They had Juan Dixon, who uh, played 22 minutes a game. But besides him, they really didn't have anybody off the bench uh, contributing significantly. Michael Ruffin played 17 minutes a game, but besides that, that was it. The starters played a ton. Arenas was averaging 45 minutes a game. Uh, Antoine Jameson, 38. Larry Hughes, 40. So um, they really didn't have much need for the bench. All those guys were playing really well in the playoffs, but honestly, just the lack of a bench is what really got this team. And they weren't able to compete with the Heat. They lost in the sweep, as I said. Uh, the Heat were really good that year, too. They had Eddie Jones besides Shaq and Wade, so he provided a really good third option. And then they had a pretty decent supporting cast, too. Uh, not wonderful, but like decent. Uh, good enough. Better than what the Wizards had, who basically had nothing outside of their three main players. Uh, so this 04-05 season after that is when a lot of stuff changed. Um, so in... In, it changed in that they lost Larry Hughes, who you could argue was their second best player. Uh, you know, I'd say he was their third best player after Arenas and Jameson. Uh, but he provided a lot to the team. 22 points a game. He was the second leading scorer. Uh, and he provided really elite defense on the wing. And so he was a major contributor to the team. And it was a really big hit to lose him. He had been making $5 million and he went away in free agency to sign with the Cavaliers where he uh, made more a lot more money obviously but this was a huge blow to this team I think that things would have been a lot differently if they would have been able to keep him but they couldn't so oh well they lose him and they retool and the retooling was that they brought in uh, Karan Butler who is also a very good player and so this season was another good year for the Wizards in that they were the fifth seed again and they won 42 games which is kind of crazy to think that a fifth seed could only win 42 games 
But they had Arenas averaging uh, 29 a game. They had Jamison averaging 21. Karan Butler averaging 18. Uh, And then their sixth man, you had Antonio uh, Daniels averaging about 10 points a game and four assists. And then Jared Jeffries was their last starter along with Haywood, who were just kind of like all right guys, not great. But uh, they're each averaging around seven points a game. And Haywood was getting six rebounds a game, and Jeffries was getting around five. So not amazing production out of those guys. And besides that, they really didn't have much else off the bench. Um, it was really just uh, Antonio McDaniels, the point guard off the bench. He was playing around 30 minutes a game. and But all the scoring was basically done by Arenas, Jamison, and Butler. And it makes sense because when you add up those guys' averages, they come out to be about, um, let's see here, they, that comes out to be about 80 points a game between the three of them. Uh, so it makes sense that there wasn't a need for a ton of other scoring on the team. But again, their bench was somewhat weak, and they did lose in the first round this year, I believe. Yes, they did. They lost to the Cavs in the first round. And the problem this year uh, was really, I think, you'd say their shooting wasn't great. Uh Arenas was 46% in the playoffs. Uh, Karan Butler was 41%. Jameson, 42%. Uh, and Jared Jeffries was below 40% from the field. So not great shooting. Uh, again, they had no one to rely on on the bench. They played Antonio Daniels a lot, but really no other players off the bench. So they were really just dealing with six guys the whole time. Um, Arenas averaged 34 in the playoffs, which is really good. Jameson and Butler averaged around the same stats as usual. McDaniel stepped up because he was averaging a few more minutes a game, so he had 13 points a game. So he was doing pretty well this season. Uh, salary cap was looking all right. Uh, Karan Butler was on a really small deal, so that really helped the team. But unfortunately, they didn't really bring in anyone else um, who stayed healthy that could significantly contribute to be a help off the bench. But they did still have Antonio McDaniel, so that was good. And, you know, they were a prime playoff contender, and the only problem this year was really that uh, LeBron had gotten in their way, and they had underachieved a little bit in the regular season. I would have hoped, it, or I, not I, but just in general, they would have hoped that they could have gotten a few more wins because uh, 42 wasn't really as much as they should have gotten for a weak Eastern Conference that only had, like, the Heat and the Pistons as really major contenders. Uh, you could say the Nets, too, but... Uh, Really, outside of those three teams, they could have been a bit higher, I'd say. Um, Like, they could have been as good or better than the Wizards, or, excuse me, the Nets. They just underperformed a bit. 06-07, sort of the same story, 41-41, and again, the five seed. Um, They played the Cavs again in the first round. Uh, Per game stats, pretty similar. Goberinas, 28 points a game. Karan Butler, 19. Jameson, 20 and 8. Uh, the major difference between this season is that they picked up a guy uh, through the draft, I believe, who was Deshaun Stevenson, who was a rookie. He started every game. He took over in the place of um, who was starting the year before for them. The year before at shooting guard, they had been starting... Um, it was, it was a really just a plethora of guys I'm seeing on here. They just had this guy named Jarvis Hayes start a few games. Um, oh, they had Karan Butler starting at shooting guard, and Jameson had actually been playing small forward a bit. But now they they transitioned, and they didn't have um, Jared Jeffries starting anymore. He had switched teams. So the starting lineup was Brendan Haywood at center, Jameson at power forward, uh, Karan Butler at small forward, Deshaun Stevenson at shooting guard, and Gilbert Arenas at um, starting point guard. This team, again, as I said, pretty similar stats. Deshaun Stevenson actually played really well as a rookie, put up 11 points a game for them, three rebounds, three assists a game. Uh, he was a solid defender, um, could take on the best wing player of the opposite team, which is really helpful. Again, uh, they had Antonio Mc- Antonio Daniels off the bench, who was averaging seven points a game this year and four assists. But really, no one else. No one else. Uh, Jarvis Hayes played 20 minutes a game off the bench and averaged seven points. But no one else really uh, playing significant minutes off the bench. 
uh, like a few guys playing in the teens, but uh, really they relied heavily on their starters. Uh, Gilbert Arenas averaging 40 minutes a game, uh, Karan Butler 39, Antoine Jameson 38. Uh, so really they were just heavily reliant on their starters. And it hurt them, I think, because those guys ran out of gas a lot. And then when they did, they didn't have much uh, productivity off the bench besides Antonio Daniels, who, although good, wasn't great. Uh, okay, so then we get to the playoffs, and the main problem here was that uh, they had had some injuries that had hurt them in that uh, Karan Butler and... Uh, Gilbert Arenas both missed the playoffs because of late injuries in the season. They had played for most of the season, but uh, Karan Butler missed about 20 games at the end. Gilbert Arenas missed about 5 to 8 games at the end, and neither were ready for the playoffs. So basically, it was just the Antoine Jameson show this year. Um, they had him averaging 32 in the playoffs, and Antonio McDaniels was a second option, honestly. He was averaging 13 a game, and then Hayes was averaging 11 a game. But really, besides those three guys, and the second option being 13 points a game from, McD from Daniels, they didn't have much. And it makes sense why they didn't do all that great, because, uh, you know, when you're, when you're a one-man team and you have LeBron James, you're going to beat a one-man team that's manned by Antoine Jameson. So I don't think it, it's uh, any slight that they lost in that series against them. But, but again, losing to the Cavs in the first round as the fifth seed. Um, and just, like, not not living up to their potential. I don't get... I think it's really just a lack of the bench because they just didn't have anybody outside of these three guys. Um, looking at the salary cap for these teams really quick, they, ha they were paying Jamison quite a bit of their salary cap and Gilbert Arenas. Those guys were making about 28 combined and then Karan Butler was adding to that making about 8 million uh, but really um, they weren't paying anybody that much money but be between those three guys and they were paying a few guys like Eton Thomas they're paying six million dollars or seven million dollars that's probably a little bit too much too uh, everyone else was pretty reasonable but um, they just were so reliant on their start on the starting big three that they didn't have much room for other guys. 0708 was sort of the beginning of the end for this team. Gilbert Arenas only played 13 games because he had severe injuries this year. So it was really the Karan Butler and Antoine Jameson show. Karan Butler also missed about 25 games, so that really hampered them. They still finished as a contender that made the playoffs. They finished with 41 or 43 wins actually. And they lost in the first round again to the Cavs. Um, but the, their starters this year were basically Butler, Jameson, Deshaun Stevenson, Brendan Haywood, all those same guys. And then sub in Antonio Daniels for uh, Gilbert Arenas. And so he was giving you eight points and five assists a game. Uh, not much. And really they didn't have much off the bench either. They had um, the introduction of guys like Andre Blatch and Nick Young, who became their, their main guys off the bench, both averaged eight points a game. Uh, Roger Mason gave them nine points a game off the bench, so a little more bench help. Uh, probably because Arenas was out, they had to spread the wealth more as far as offense goes, and uh, those guys were getting a bit more touches on offense. Uh, Jameson saw his stats uptick slightly. He was averaging 21 and 10 instead of more like his typical 20 and 9. Not a big difference, but probably just because Gilbert Arenas was out, he got a few more touches. Uh, in the playoffs, they lost to the Cavs, really just because they were missing Arenas, who is by far their best player. Um, but the the guys did decent in the playoffs, no one did bad. Um, they just didn't really have the talent to match the Cavs, honestly. And then this is when it really fell off completely after 2007 to 2008. Uh, the next season, they finished with uh, a record of 19 and 63. And Arenas missed like the whole season except for two games this year. And Karan Butler missed 15 games. And Deshaun Stevenson missed about 50 games. Um, Brendan Haywood missed the whole season. So the starting lineup looked a lot different. For the most of the season, you'd say the starting lineup was uh, 
It was Mike James who they had brought in as a free agent at point guard. Then at shooting guard, um, most of the time you had this guy named Dominic McGuire who wasn't all that great. And then you had Karam Butler, uh, Antoine Jameson, and then kind of a platoon at center. But you'd say like the main guy was probably Andre Blatch, who's giving you 10 points a game. Uh, so this year, not I can see why they did terrible. They had Jameson and Butler, but really outside of that, not much at all. Uh, two other starters and their best player basically missed the whole season. Uh, and then their third, a third starter, Stevenson, missed, uh, you'd say, about two-thirds of the season. Uh, so it's really not that much of a mystery that they didn't do that well. It did see a little bit of development with guys like Andre Blatch, who averaged 10 points a game, and Nick Young averaged 11 points a game. Uh, so that was a good feat for them. But really, this was the end of this era. Uh, afterwards, um, the next season, Karan Butler got traded away and Antoine Jameson got traded away. Gilbert Arenas wasn't his former self. He had lost a lot of his explosiveness in, because he had practically missed two full seasons. And uh, really, Des Deshaun Stevenson wasn't much to carry a team. They, they traded him away along with Brendan Haywood in the Karan Butler trade. So really, they just cleaned house, and the only guy that was left of that era was uh, Gilbert Arenas. I mean, you can say Andre Blatch and Nick Young were part of that era, but not really. It was just Gilbert Arenas left who didn't have his explosiveness anymore. And so that's really what led them to be a bad team and then to get draft picks like John Wall and Bradley Beal in the future. And so if I had to attribute the problems to this team, I'd say that number one was injury because... Gilbert Arenas missed two full seasons, and that was really bad for them. And also, uh, quietly, um, I noticed Karan Butler, in looking back at these stats, I noticed he missed a lot of time, too. There were seasons where he missed 25 games, 15. In all of these seasons that I described, he never even played 75 games for them. It was always between, like, 55 and 65. So it might not seem like a big deal, but I think that could be a factor in why they're rank in the standings was so low a lot of times and they were only a fifth seed so I'd say definitely injuries was number one on why they failed and I'd say number two was probably that um, their depth was not very good well when you're you got three really good scoring options but you basically had no bench essentially only playing six guys most of the time in a lot of their key games uh, which just really isn't good for your guys because they get really worn down during the season then especially uh, when Arenas is playing about 40 minutes a night and he's your best guy, come playoff time, they're going to be drained. And uh, I think besides that, the reason that we don't hear as much about this team anymore is because uh, they're t they're two of the three star players were quiet guys in Butler and Jameson. And their, their third big guy, uh, Arenas, who is their star player, uh, his career kind of flamed out really quick after those two years of missed injury. And then... Uh, he had this gun incident that if you don't know about that, just Google it. But basically, people after that just disregarded him and that people were done with him and didn't want to uh, think about him much anymore. But he did have a dominant run for those three years where he averaged 26, 29, and 28. Uh, and I guess adding in to the one about depth, I think a huge difference maker would have been keeping Larry Hughes. Now, yes, Larry Hughes didn't go on to be... Uh, you know, he didn't go on to be a huge all-star or anything, but I think he could have been a great contributor and a, a, a great starter for them. Instead of having to start Jared Jeffries or Deshaun Stevenson, he could have been a great fourth option on the team or second or third option, depending on how they wanted to do it. Definitely would have been an upgrade over Jared Jeffries for a few years there. And when Stevenson came in, uh, you could have put Larry Hughes as a great sixth man, and he could have given you 15 points a night. So if I'm going to hammer it out, I'm going to say the injuries were a big problem. And then the the depth was a huge problem. No, And then not re-signing Larry Hughes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to really say that those are the three options. So not re-signing Larry Hughes is the third one. Um, and this Wizards team really had the potential. I think how I think of this team is how I think people today think of the Chris Paul uh, Clippers, you know. The Clippers seem like a team who should be in the conference finals almost every year. 
They made it there once. Uh, the Wizards made the, the second round once. But the Clippers in that, uh, they had Chris Paul for six seasons, and they lost in the first round, I think, three or four of them, which is uh, very disappointing. I guess three of them. And these Wizards, if they wouldn't have had the injuries, if Gobert Arenas would have been healthy his whole time, their story could have been a lot different. They might have gotten past the Cavs some of those years and not lost to them in 06, 07, 08. But we'll never know that because uh, the injuries at Gobert Arenas. But I hope you guys found this video interesting. I found it really interesting. I think they're a forgotten uh, team in the NBA history books. I think that they're really interesting in that they had three all-stars in their prime, and yet no one really talks about them ever. They were a big three before big threes existed, and they did it uh, artificially like, like the teams are doing now. They signed arenas in free agency. They traded for Jameson, and they signed Karan Butler in free agency. And people don't really do that. Uh, back then and so it's really cool that they brought in three all-star players like that Hope you learned something if you have anything to say leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye